Hey everybody, it's Creech Boo from Drop Dead Ink again, and I just wanted to go over a little bit of talk about tattoo rotary pens. Um, uh, okay, so for one I had, um, and again, I'm going to try not to really slam any companies on my channel or really promote any companies. Um, you know, I'm not sponsored by anybody. Um, you know, some people have better luck with things than some people, um, and whatever, but I will say, um, and a lot of people are familiar with it, these are very expensive. They were pretty much the first tattoo pens that really came out. Um, I paid $700 for it, um, and I'll tell you, I didn't nearly get my money back off of it before the motor kind of conked out on me and there really was no way to get inside it and fix it at the time. Um, I know a lot with rotaries now, they have like cordless motors or that you can actually interchange motors and stuff and they made them a lot easier to get to and to just, you know, eventually with rotary machines, especially if you run them on high voltage, um, you know, you're going to end up cooking the motors, um, and they were really hard to get into, you know, if at all, and, you know, you had to rewire them, and they're so, everything's so small and, you know, tight together, it was really difficult, but <clears throat> with this particular $700 pen that I had bought, for one, it was a 3.5, a pre-installed 3.5 millimeter that used to advertise that had this adjustable, um, adjust the stroke length on the fly and which was just flat out false advertisement all that was basically doing was adjusting the needle protrusion as I went over in another video about cartridge uh, twist grips the claim they adjust the stroke length when in all actuality all they're doing is adjusting the needle protrusion and more and more companies are finally starting to come out and be honest about that um, you know, a lot of newer people, if you don't know really how to adjust the stroke length on a machine or even what it is, the stroke length, the hit, um, or the throw as it's called, it's basically all of it's adjusting the stroke length. Um, and if you watch those any of my other videos, I have a little 14 round shader that I use for like a beater needle to set liners and shaders, well, you know, a standard needle bar. Um, again, even with like rotaries um, or anything that I would normally use a cartridge needle on, I do have a little beater, um, and this particular one's a little nine round or whatever. So as far as rotary pens go, um, well, for one, this one right here um, definitely outlasted and outperformed my $700 one. Um, and I'll tell you one main reason why is, and it's rare with the rotary pens or rotary machines in general to find this, but if you can see this the top of that, there's basically, you know, a set of three little dots right here in this little screw. Um, in the middle of that is 3.5, which is 3.5 millimeters. So that would be the stroke length when I got that, that screw was over here, right in the middle, which was set at 3.5 millimeters. Um, by moving it over to the right, right now it's set at four millimeters. And honestly with pens, uh, I personally never had a lot of luck as far as like aligning with them, um, even when they were like, you know, if it would be more on a line or even on a 3.5 millimeter, and that goes with really any of them. I found that by putting this on a 4 millimeter, which if it was on like a, a coil machine or like a just a regular standard rotary machine, like 4 millimeters are generally a good um, color packer, a good shader. Um, but I did find on this particular one that by putting it on four millimeters, um, it does a lot better for both um, than when I had it on 3.5. <clears throat> Again, the same as with like a cart or like a twist grip as uh, a lot of these cartridge tubes advertise. They say basically when you twist the, the tube, which basically it was the same thing as doing this, um, basically all that's doing is adjusting how far the needle sticks out of the end of that. And I'm not going to get too into it because I'm trying to do all this stuff with one hand. This end up, but uh, one thing about this particular pen is I can actually adjust. So basically by twisting the end of that, like with most pens that are usually preset 3.5 millimeter stroke lengths, um, what by twisting this, which is the same thing is twisting uh, a cartridge tube all that's doing is adjusting how far that needle sticks out of the end of the tube this particular pen and there are a few out there that do have adjustable stroke length like this particular one and again that required me to loosen this little screw up right here and actually turn it to the stroke length so I think this was like three three point five and four millimeter 
Um, again, I found a, this better for everything on four millimeter. Um, and again, I, you know, this is again my little beater cartridge. I have, you know, new ones. Um, and, you know, basically the same thing I do with pens, like, you know, I'll give them a little drop of oil on, like, you can take this whole end piece off, there's like a little, uh, kind of like a flywheel type thing on the inside there, um, you know, and I was able to get a sneak a little drop of oil on that, and it's like running on six volts, um, and this is like actually I have the my little beater needle for this is a nine round. One thing I will say also about tattoo pens is um, a lot of people may have noticed on this RCA cord, um, and I found out this too with my seven hundred dollar junk pen that I bought. Um, well, for one, it was really hard to get a replacement cord for a lot of the good companies that I buy tattoo supplies from stop selling their products all together. So it was really hard for me to get a replacement cord. But what had happened is when you have RCA cords, um, unless they have like a 90 degree kind of bend in it, like automatically, like the uh, replacement cords came for that. What happens is because of the way normally you hold the pen when you're tattooing, um, these RCA cords will kind of almost like disconnect in there so what i just did um you know for this is i just wrapped it basically with a, a lot of electrical tape so um you know the bend would be way back here and what i also i found with that is it kind of keeps it away from client skin even though i do use bags over my uh cords when i'm actually working as i also i would have a bag over this whole entire uh pen when i'm working um, and gloves on, of course. But uh, one thing you guys can do really to save yourself a lot of headache um, is just, you know, if unless you can get like a, a RCA cord with like a 90 degree immediate bend after where it plugs in, is it's a really good idea to kind of tape, you know, five, four, five, six inches of it so it's pretty sturdy and it won't bend. Because again, you'll end up kind of disconnecting there and it'll sort of short out when you're running. Um, and then one thing too with those 90 degree cords, you wouldn't want to use those on a rotary machine that had like the basically plugged in from the bottom of the machine because technically where that 90 would be coming out, it's kind of doing the same thing. Um, so, you know, I mean, just be careful out there, you guys, when you hear a lot of, you know, advertisements and stuff. Um, Again, 3.5 millimeters, it's a decent, you know, adjustment for kind of lining and shading. It's not really good for either. Um, usually if I have a 3.5 millimeter, like the rotaries that I have, the couple that are preset 3.5 millimeters, I'll either use them for just lining only or they make great gray washers, uh, you know, soft shading. But again, even with this particular pen that wasn't nearly as much as that six or seven hundred dollar one, I you know I already this has outlasted that you know and I use this actually a lot more than the other one when I uh, did have it because it's it was kind of like actually heavy and a little bulky for you know what I thought they were gonna be. Um, so I found that these shorter ones, uh, you know, with more like a little taper here, they're actually a little easier to you know hold on to, and this is like super light. Um, you know, again, so there's just a couple things or whatever. I'm going to go out and do one more video about the stroke length with coil machines because the very first one I made, it was my very first video ever, and I think I could maybe explain things a little bit differently uh, or a little bit better. You know, I was a little nervous my first video, but, um, you know, and again, uh, if anybody out there is interested, by the way, in getting tattoos, you should never, if you're going to a tattoo artist, they should never have anything like this already set up. Like, make sure that, you know, your cartridges are all, you know, everything is open in front of you. Again, when you're working with a pen, it should have some type of protective bag over the whole entire thing, the cord, too. I'm going to go through, a, do a video about, you know, um setting up your work area and whatnot or whatever but i always keep a beater um it's not really a good idea to actually run tattoo machines without needles in them period um so again you know and, and one thing i will say too with these is since you there's no armature bar to watch uh you know just because a company's claiming it's 3.5 millimeters it might not be like for all i know just by turning this little thing you know, you're taking their word for it. So when I have that supposedly set on four millimeters, I, there's really no way of 
you know, I'm kind of more or less taking their word for it. But I will say that by having this one set on four millimeters, um, that it seems to run a lot better as both a liner and a shader. And I only use these for like super, super small work or like black and gray. Um, they're really good for lettering, I found too, um, you know, because it does have that feel of almost like a natural pen. Um, these are a little chunkier than the $700 one that I bought. But again, this wasn't even like nearly the cost of that and it's definitely outlasted it. Um, and I believe this has a Japanese or Chinese motor, whatever in it. Um, but you know, I, and I even with that, by the time I got that $700 one, I knew not to run rotaries on extremely high voltage. Um, so, you know, right now this is like on six volts and that's the max that I ever use that on. And basically all I do, the, like the biggest needle configuration I'll use on any pens is like, uh, you know, like a seven mag. Um, and this again is like a nine round. Um, I'll even go over like needle configurations with you guys, you know, the difference between mags, flats, rounds, um, but you know, uh, so pens are definitely a little tricky, you know, I don't know, I'm old school, I've been tattooing a long time, when I was in, started tattooing there was really rotary machines were like unheard of at the time, except in prison, which is basically how rotary machines actually really came about um pens certainly were anything like pens weren't around so i don't know if it's mainly because i'm like kind of old school but i always for one would suggest learning on a coil machine and i'm just like i've always stuck to them i think they're far more reliable you can definitely get a wider range of adjustment out of them um i always use coil machines for any large work or serious color packing um because for one, again, these are little motors, they're not like coils. Um, so if you, you know, if you run these for a long period of time around too high a voltage, they will eventually burn out, even though I've had tremendous luck with them ever since I learned some lessons about voltage and whatnot after my first experience with uh, rotaries because they were so quiet and I was so used to the noise of a coil machine, I would kind of run them on too high a voltage. Like, and I have, right now there's not one rotary machine that I have that I ever run over, um, you know, seven volts. I have a Hummingbird Gen 2 that's got such a nice little strong um, Swiss Maxon motor in it and, you know, I just take really good care of it. I oil the bearings and stuff and that thing will push anything on five volts, like, easily. Um, so, you know, again, pens, I don't know, you know, for one, they're kind of like the Lazy Man Tattoo Machine. I would, I definitely wouldn't suggest learning on them because you're basically not learning anything about mechanics of the tattooing as, as far as machine mechanics. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, this again, I use it for lettering, really small tattoos, dot work type stuff. Um, but I definitely don't get into any major serious tattoos with pens. And personally, I mean, I don't want to hex myself and talk bad in front of this one because I don't want anything bad to happen to it. But if I had a choice of like a coil machine or one of these, I would take a coil machine a hundred times over a rotary period. Um, definitely as far as, you know, how long they last in general. Um, and I'll show you that actually when I do this next video about setting um, stroke length. So again, and keep that in mind about those RCA cords, you guys. So again, when you have like just a straight RCA cord, uh, um, you know, like this particular pen did come with a straight one. It's not the one that I'm using on it now. Um, but I found when I had that $700 one that it had a straight cord and what would happen is it just started shorting out and this was within, you know, I had like 40 hours on it maybe and I'm thinking, don't tell me this thing is going with 40 hours and I had found out that the, um, the connection basically was starting to kind of break in the cord itself um, and it's just because, like I say, basically how you hold the pen um, you know, it's always at an angle like that, uh, usually, so that cord is always pulling down with the gravity, and it's usually pulling right where it connects, so it end up kind of, you know, pulling apart there, um, so it's a good idea to, you know, just wrap it up with some electrical tape just so you can get, you know, a nice straight shot that's not gonna, uh, you know, disconnect and you won't have to go out and buy, you know, replacement cords, and again, the opposite, if you have an RCA, 
or a rotary pen or whatever, RCA, RCA connection that plugs in from the bottom, you won't want to use a 90 on it. You would want it something straight that comes out just to save you guys some, you know, future headache. And again, when I had that $700 one, I had a heck of a time actually finding replacements because I'll tell you what, I, I noticed Amazon started selling those $700 ones and it was at one point like that company, I don't think would even considered selling products to Amazon, but two of the major, and I, I, you know, I have some really good supply companies and one of them's probably one of the most popular supply companies the most well known in the United States. And they stopped selling all their products altogether. Like I couldn't buy replacement parts from them. I couldn't buy, you know, no pens, no power supplies, nothing um, from that one particular company. So, you know, buyer beware. Um, and again, again, even that $700 one, some miracle tattoo machine as they perceived it to be, you know, the on the fly change your needle stroke all that on the fly anything was doing because i had a pre-installed 3.5 millimeter stroke link so that on the fly wasn't doing anything besides changing how far your needle stuck out at the end of the tube which is a needle protrusion and stroke length are two completely different things this on the other hand you know at least as they say it's adjustable and i i did find a little bit of by putting it on the four millimeter setting I found that it does work better as both a liner and a shader. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of them out there that you can that are actually adjustable, but for the most part, most rotaries and almost every single tattoo pen, rotary pen out there are pre-installed 3.5 millimeter stroke length. That's the most we're gonna get out of it. You can twist that end piece all you want and all that's gonna do is stick your needle out further. Um, so anyway, I, I'll put out one more video for you guys tonight. And again, guys, you know, don't ever have stuff like this out for your client, you know, everything. I know I, I do these videos and I don't wear gloves because I'm not like an egomaniac that thinks I deserve $100 an hour. So I do try to consolidate stuff. Um, and, you know, what I'll do after, like I do after all these videos, videos I'll use like Matticide, which is a... Uh, uh, disinfectant kind of spray that you know pretty much kills everything and I you know I do wash all these machines down and stuff afterwards so I just don't you know I kind of don't really feel like burning up gloves just every time I want to make a video but of course I would be using them if I was working on somebody so all right guys um, you know thinking see ya